Hello everyone and welcome back to Close to Be Milkshake. I am your host along with Mr. Chicken. Support Puppet, what is wrong with me? I think I'm tired. But anyways, we're gonna get through this. Yes, we are. Show them sexy legs, yeah. All right, today we're gonna go over the diagnostic features of what makes up somebody with narcissistic personality disorder. Hopefully this will help you be able to pinpoint in specific people in your life, um, you know, if they are suffering with this disorder or you're suffering because of this disorder or somebody who doesn't understand all the nooks and crannies of the disorder, this is gonna be a light bulb moment for you, okay? Believe me, it took me several years to figure out all these tiny little micro things about myself, okay? So no TikTok fucking video is just gonna show up and say, what is me, all right? Mm, all right, so these are the diagnostic features. Let's begin. The essential features of narcissistic personality disorder is a pervasive pattern of grandiosity, need for admiration, and lack of empathy that begins in a early, early adulthood and is present in a variety of contexts. Now, I believe I've read also, this starts way the fuck earlier, okay? Not just in early adulthood, but you don't see it because you think that kids are just assholes, okay? But we are conditioned, you know, by the time we're fucking, what, 18 months? <sighs> or at least the seeds have been planted, okay? Um, when also, when I talk about needs for admiration, I want you to think of like a narcissistic parent who wants you to, um, you know, be grateful kiss their ass for everything that they are accomplishing for the family i don't think that it's some um, self-centered or selfish to want that from the family but that's you know another thing about being admired it's like i admire you for where you came from to who you have become at least in my eyes that's how i take it okay Individuals with this disorder have a grandiose sense of self-importance. They routinely overestimate their abilities and inflate their accomplishments. Hey, if I'm going to talk about how fucking awesome I was working at the movie theater as a teenager, I was awesome, okay? And nobody's going to tell me that I was a not, all right? I look cute in my bow tie. <laughs> Often appearing boastful and pretentious, yes. They may blithely assume that others attribute the same value to their efforts and may be surprised when the praise they expect and feel they deserve is not forthcoming. So if I start talking about, you know, the things that I, that's plaguing my life um, and doing research on this stuff and learning and all the hard work that I've been doing just to figure myself out. There, there's no um, even, uh, well, I can't say no micro fixing, but you know, it's all just, I, there's so much to figure out about this disorder, you know, and all the little avenues and everything that um, if you're not praising me for this shit, yes, I'm going to be mad. <laughs> Often implicit in their inflated judgments of their own accomplishments is an underestimation, devaluation of the contributions of others. Yeah, so if you're not going to clap your hands on the things that I tell you that I'm a badass about, um, you're garbage, okay? <laughs> Individuals with narcissistic personality disorder are often preoccupied with fantasies of unlimited success, power, brilliance, beauty, and ideal love. Yes. <laughs> they may ruminate about long overdue admiration, privilege, and compare themselves favorably with famous or privileged 
people. I think um, due to social media and um, it's very hard to think of celebrities as these larger in life things anymore. I mean, we know everything about their lives and stuff. They're garbage. They're garbage. They just get a bigger paycheck to, you know, act or sing with auto tune, you know. All right. And we all know that they've been abused. So to get to where they are. Individuals with narcissistic personality disorder believe that they are superior, special, or unique. Oh, uh, uh, hello. And expect others to recognize them as such. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the fucking bell, please. <laughs> Total dick. At least I'm telling you the truth, man, right? The only one. Not the only one. Okay. Uh... They may feel that they can only be understood by and should be associated with other people who are special or of high status and may attribute unique, perfect, or gifted qualities to those whom they associate. So um, you will also see that we don't give a shit about low-level people or the groupies in social media, please. Never be jealous or feel threatened by um, these fucking names and comments and what. Uh, they're nothing. I promise you, okay? Individuals with this disorder believe that their needs are special and beyond the kin of ordinary people. Their own self-esteem is enhanced, mirrored by idealized value that they assign to those whom they associate. Now, I believe that they say assigned to because we're making up the value that you hold. You're like a fucking Bitcoin, okay? Bitcoin's going down is when somebody's like, okay, this monop monopoly money um, holds no more value, okay? The same for you. Your monopoly money. I'm playing the game of my life. You hold value, you're, you know, either one of the little bullshit purple ones or fucking Park Avenue, okay? I usually end up in jail though, all right. Their own, I already said that, they are likely to insist on having only the top person, doctor, lawyer, hairdresser, instructor, or being affiliated with the best institutions but may devalue the credentials of those who disappoint them yes so you will see like um say sam vaknin gets asked to speak at a big university or something and he's going to fucking boast about going there now say that they don't treat him very well while he's there well he's going to smear the shit out of them okay okay Richard Grannon knows. <laughs> Individuals with this disorder generally require excessive admiration. Their self-esteem is all, almost invariably very fragile. They may be preoccupied with how well they are doing and how favorably they're regarded by others. This is also a problem with um, needing to be perfect all the time. You know, we do not want to be criticized for anything. So, you know, fucking up is not okay. Um, you'll also see people who, if they do make mistakes, that they'll either blame others or you made me do it and right? This often takes the form of a need for constant attention and admiration. They may expect their arrival to be greeted with great fanfare and are astonished if others do not covet their possessions. One thing, um, like going to a family function or something, it's like, I'm here, I'm here, let the party start, you know? Um, or coming to see my, um, uh, ex-partner you know from being gone all day you know and it's still fresh and new hadn't been going out not even for a year and a half and stuff and so you're not, at least i'm not you know sick 
or annoyed of my partner yet. And so, you know, I was enjoying coming to see and I needed him to be happy to see me. But, um, you know, his love meter went down. His fantasy meter went down. <laughs> they may constantly fish for compliments, often with great charm. See, I never think that I'm doing that, but um, I do want admiration for the things that I have done or accomplished. Okay. A sense of entitlement is evident in these individuals unreasonable expectations of especially favorable treatment they expect to be catered to and are puzzled or furious when this doesn't happen outside of the home i really don't give a shit okay i'm not one of those people that are like i want the best table I, I, I shouldn't have to stand, I should go to the beginning of the line, you know? I mean, I have social anxiety already. I don't like standing in line already, you know, but it's not because I feel like I should be first, okay? But I have seen people like that, um, shit, man, and I've watched it go to strangers and shit. I'm like, why are you exposing your assholism? You look like a dumb dick but they don't know this. They, they believe that they deserve a certain amount of treatment. It's very, it's, you know, interesting to watch, you know, and God knows what I do that I don't notice. Cringe, all right. For example, they may assume that they do not have to wait in line and that their priorities are so important that others should defer to them and then get irritated when others fail to assist in their very important work. All right, one time I was gonna be late for a plane and um, I did yell out to the whole line that my plane was leaving, can I cut in front? And when nobody said anything, I go, I can't believe nobody's gonna help me. All right, so maybe, maybe I did the thing, okay. This sense of entitlement combined with a lack of sensitivity to the wants and needs of others may result in the conscious or unwittingly, there is no L-Y, unwitting exploitation of others. They expect to be given whatever they want and feel they, they need no matter what, what it might mean to others for example these individuals might expect great dedication from others may overwork them without regard for the impact of their lives if i'm working late why aren't you okay <laughs> they tend to form friendships or romantic relationships only if the other person seems likely to advance their purposes or otherwise enhance their self-esteem. This is why when you guys call borderlines narcissists and you tell me that um, they keep going after you, keep going after you, keep going after, it's like, no. If, 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 uh, if you are not reciprocating, it's over, I'm done. I'm not going after you anymore, you know? Uh, at least at that time. One time I tried to work it with one fucking guy online. It wasn't working. I left motherfuck for five years, came back and I got in and I got in then. Okay. But, um, yeah, if, if it's not happening, I'm done. I'm not sticking around. So know your fucking audience. All right. They often, I don't know that word, uh, usurp special privileges and extra resources that they believe they deserve because they are so special. <sighs> when I was younger, I would like drink everybody's beer. <laughs> if I was staying at their house, I'd, t I'd just take all their shit. Uh, individuals with narcissistic personality disorder generally have a lack of empathy and have difficulty recognizing the desires, subjective experiences, and feelings of others. 
Do you see? This isn't something that I have that I'm withholding from you. We actually do not see your needs. I only see my own. They may assume that others are totally concerned about their welfare. They tend to discuss their own concerns in inappropriate and lengthy, lengthy detail while failing to recognize that others also have feelings and needs. So this is like when you're complaining, you know, say that's a family member, something has a grievance with you and they're trying to tell you about it and they flip it and then they start, you know, saying how they're being treated unfairly, how they're not being listened to, how you're selfish and they believe this shit, okay? They are often contemptuous and impatient with others who talk about their own problems and concerns. You will see um, they will be annoyed. They will be waiting for, for their turn to talk. Um, but if they do have ADHD, they will interrupt you a lot. Otherwise, they're going to forget what the fuck that they're talking about. So that happens a lot often too. Also, changing of subjects. Okay, that happens a lot too, um, and that's not um, be because they're trying to fuck with you. Okay, they may just not like what you're talking about as well, or they're bored, and so they get off and set. I segue all the time. You guys know this. All right, where am I? These individuals may be oblivious to the hurt. Um, exuberantly telling a former lover that I am now in a relationship of a lifetime. Boasting of health in front of somebody who is sick. Yes, I have seen cluster bees do this shit. When recognized, the needs, desires, or feelings of others are likely to be viewed disparagingly as signs of weakness or vulnerability. So like, you know, them being disgusted with you when you cry or, um, you know, you're in pain or something and maybe they will fake empathy and give you a hug and stuff like that, but they don't feel the pain that you're feeling. So they, they move on quickly and then will wonder why, why the fuck aren't you moving on? I'm not in distress. Why are you? It's very dismissive, but I'm telling you, this is like this just automatic fucking feeling. It's like, I'm done. I'm done. Why are, why are you not done being upset? All right. Those who relate to individuals with narcissistic personality disorder typically find an emotional coldness and lack of reciprocal interest. Yes, I have been called Chili Heart, okay? These individuals are often envious of others or believe that others are envious of them. They may begrudge others their successes or possessions, feeling that they, they better deserve those achievements, admirations, or privileges. This is why if anything good happens to you, they're either gonna be fake happy for you and they really fucking just hate that you're getting, you're so fucking happy that great things are happening for you. Where's my happiness? Okay, why isn't life filling, overflowing my fucking cup? Why do you get, why, 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 why? You know, we're always comparing to. They may harshly devalue the contributions of others particularly when those individuals have received acknowledgement or praise for their accomplishments. Same shit like I was talking about. You'll even see some people, um, even your partner isn't going to um, celebrate for you, you know, because they're jealous of those wonderful, happy, warm feelings that you have that are going on and they can't connect to that feeling. Me though, I am, in power couple mode with my partner so i'm riding the coattails of whatever fucking greatness is happening to them you know i have also learned throughout my life that 
when my partner is happy, it makes the home happy. So, you know, narcissistic people, borderlines and beyond should fucking, you know, clap your hands when your partner is doing well, you know, because happy, happy partner is a happy life, home life for a little bit till, you know, we fuck it up in some way. <laughs> Arrogant, haughty behaviors characterize these individuals. They often display snobbish, disdainful, and patronizing attitudes. Well, you've seen that on my channel a shit ton. For example, an individual with this disorder may complain about clumsy waiters, rudeness, or stupidity, or conclude a medical evaluation with a condescending evaluation of the physician. And I'm sure that this happens to therapists all the time. Okay, associated features supporting the diagnosis. Vulnerability and self-esteem makes individuals with narcissistic personality disorder very sensitive to injury from criticism or defeat. Although they may not show it outwardly, criticism may haunt these individuals and may leave them feeling humiliated, degraded, hollow, and empty. I get fucking angry. Um, and just want to basically blow up the planet that you're living on, even if I live on it myself. Okay? They may react in disdain, rage, or defiant counterattacks. Yes. Such experiences often lead to social withdrawal or an appearance of humility that may mask and protect the grandiosity. This is fake as hell okay they need something from you so whether they lost everybody they're cycling back and they make up with you you're just being used that's it so if you miss them and you let them back into your life just know that they will cut you off again if you do anything to piss them off criticize anything all right Interpersonal relations are typically impaired because of problems derived from entitlement, the need for admiration, and the relative disregard for the sensitivities of others. You guys really need to study cognitive behavioral therapy so nothing will hurt you, okay? You will start to understand, and we need to do this too, that other people's shit, other people's projections are not your own to take in. So if somebody's talking shit about you or criticizing you or doing something to you, you have to be like, do I feel that way about me? You know, and if I don't, then this, then that's your shit. You go be mad over there or whatever like that. Now I can do that half the time. And other times, um, I'm going to shame the shit out of you for being a critical little fuck stain because you don't walk on water. Nobody walks on water. So you talking shit or devaluing me in any way is going to get severe blowback, a discard, um, or smear in your ass. Okay? Okay? Don't hurt my feelings. <laughs> Though overweening ambition and confidence may lead to high achievement performance, may be disrupted because of intolerance of criticism or defeat. So you will also see people um, quitting their jobs or their careers or quitting their goal because they feel like um, they're not going to be able to achieve it. So they just fucking give up. Sometimes vocational functioning can be very low. Reflecting an unwillingness to take a risk in competitive or other situations in which defeat is possible. Yeah, I got an alert from TikTok saying to do some sort of um, competition thing with videos and stuff. I'm like, fuck that, dude. I could lose. <laughs> Sustained feelings of shame or humiliation and the attendant 
Attendant self-criticism may be associated with social withdrawal, depressed mood, and persistent depressive disorder or major depressive disorder. Um, yeah, self-criticism, um, that shame, I'm bad, I'm bad, I'm not, you know, um, if I have a major failure in life, yes, I will be um, isolating, having depressed moods, uh, bouts of um, crying and sadness. And this did not happen to me until I started figuring out this disorder shit. I didn't know what shame was. I was just hard as a fucking rock. And learning about these things has tapped into the mushy center. It fucking sucks, dude. This better be worth it, okay? So I hope you're getting something out of it, all right? All right, okay. Narcissistic personality disorder is also associated with anorexia nervosa, 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 nirvana. Um, and substance use disorders, um, especially related to cocaine. Yeah, I was never the throw-upper, but I um, loved fucking meth at the time. Uh, histrionic, borderline, antisocial, and paranoid personality disorders may also be associated with NPD, okay? And um, just like the video that I made with all the different traits that can mix and match into their own milkshake not every person is going to be showing specific characteristics the same way okay because of our different milkshake because of you know either um our sex um whether we're single or married whether we have children or not um, if we grew up in poverty or rich, you know, it really it depends on everything, okay? Um, we're going to have different, we're going to do different things, but to, uh, or present them in different ways. But, you know, this is the base, all right? This is the base. We just have extra shit thrown into it, all right? Okay. If you guys ever want any personal one-on-one -on -one help, you know that you can email me at clusterbmilkshake at outlook.com and we can set up a phone call if you are suffering so you can get to the nook and cranny of your specific issue, okay? All the time people are like, I hate you. I can't believe you know exactly what the fuck is happening. What the fuck? <laughs> and I'm like, it's okay. That's not a criticism. That's not a criticism. Okay. So I hope that was helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell if you want to see my um, video pop up as soon as it comes out. <sighs> I never say that shit, dude. It sounds really fucking weird, but just do it. All right. Uh, thank you for showing up. I'm tired as hell. I don't know how to shut this down. What do I fucking say at the end? I'm having a brain fart. Have a nice day. Namaste.